Greetings and welcome to the introduction to astronomy. One of the things that I like to do in each of my introductory astronomy classes is to begin the class with the astronomy picture of the day from the NASA website that is apod.nasa.gov apod. And today's picture for October the 2nd of 2019. Well, it is titled molecular clouds in the Carina Nebula. So what do we see here? Well, this is a portion of the Carina Nebula. Now that is a great star forming region, much like the Orion Nebula that we look at from time to time, except that the Orion Nebula is much closer and a much smaller star forming region. And it's one of the better studied ones simply because it is so close and easier to study. But the great nebula in Carina is an even larger one and a larger star forming region. Now here we are looking at just a small portion of the nebula. In general in a nebula we're used to looking at the gas that is excited and we see typically that great red glow of hydrogen gas as hydrogen gas is excited by ultraviolet radiation from the hot stars that are forming within this nebula. Another thing associated with the nebula is the dust. And here we are seeing some of the dark globules of dust that are present within a nebula like this. Now these neb these globules are things that are uh, very large. So not just a not just a uh, few uh, meters in size or anything. These things are tremendous in size. And in fact, it's noted, they might be a light month across. So some of these areas are could be that large. Now what do we mean by a light month? Well, we use the term light year all the time. A light year is the distance that light travels in one year or about 10 trillion kilometers. So a light month would be the distance that light travels in one month or about one twelfth of a light year. So we're still talking close to a trillion kilometers across. So incredibly large. And these are the regions that are in the midst of collapsing to become stars. So some of these will become new stars in the future. And that's what's happening at the dense cores of these dark areas. Now that's difficult to see in visible light. And we often use infrared and radio telescopes and especially in the case like this where the stars are forming infrared telescopes to peer within the globules and to be able to see what is happening inside these the infrared light being longer wavelengths is better able to penetrate these and allow us kind of a peek into that stellar nursery where those stars are just beginning to form now as the stars do form they will emerge from their cocoons uh, that we see here essentially these globules are their cocoons and then they will start to eat away at the material so stars that have already formed previously their intense stellar winds and their radiation pressure are eating away at the gas and dust that remains within the nebula and that shapes this nebula by moving out regions that are uh, much 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 less dense so the lower density areas get eaten away quickly and the higher density areas like these globules remain for a longer time so it is a fight between two things those stars that have already formed will they eat away too much of this gas and dust that is trying to form a new star before that star actually has a chance to form or will that star form and then collect more material and of course increase the process by eating away at other globules that are still in the process of forming. So it is really a fight between those two things as to whether these stars will actually form or not. So that was our picture of the day for October the 2nd of 2019. It was titled Molecular Clouds in the Carina Nebula. We'll be back again tomorrow for the next picture previewed to be galaxy in the local group. So we'll see what that is about tomorrow. And until then, have a great day everyone. And I will see you in class.